guys, I'm the Burke and I do things. And today we're trying something new. Don't know if it's gonna work out. You guys can surely leave your feedback in the comments below and let me know if this works at all. So you see a nasty canvas bag and my ancient MacBook here. And this means one thing and one thing only. We're going through the 2023 makeup empties, but we're trying to overhead style. It took me more time than I should admit to try to set up this situation we're in and I don't even know if I did a good job. So uh, be gentle on me. Laptop's here because it has all the information. Bag is here because it is full of all our glorious trash. I have comparisons in this little lady here. I have dollar amounts in this little lady here. So if you guys are interested in seeing my trash and my analytics, then keep on watching. Let's go. I would love to not have this whole chaotic situation, but you know what? We got coffee, we got computer, we got trash. That's just gonna be the vibe. Here is the pile. Before I sort everything out, I thought I'd let you guys know some totals um, overall. For the year 2023, my like products wise we have here, I finished 26 full size items, which is exciting mainly because I was hoping to do 23 and 23, which means I did finish more than 23 full size items. And I finished 15 minis bringing me to 41 total products here, which is actually kind of low for me. I've mentioned multiple times that this was not the year of makeup for me. Hopefully the year of makeup for me is the one we're currently in. I also want to say that me doing this overhead style was completely 100% influenced by too much Tasha's 2023 makeup empties video. I will certainly link her video down below because I found it extremely satisfying to watch. And I thought, let's try to do that, that kind of stuff, the YouTuber stuff. As far as the total value of everything is sitting in front of me, this is $569.57 worth of makeup in this little tiny thing, like a little under $600. In comparison, last year I had $756.02 of empties. And in 2021, I had $760.37. So I finished about $200 less of makeup than I did the last two years. Like I said, wasn't my year for makeup. We're shooting for the stars this year. I do have my like spreadsheet overall broken into face products, eye products, brow products, and lip products. So really quick, I'm gonna sort this all out and then we'll go through the categories. Everything's sorted now. So I'm gonna start with face products. And the first category in my spreadsheet is foundations. So we're gonna start with foundations. I did finish two full-size foundations this year, which is exciting. The first one I finished is from L'Oreal and this is the Pro Glow Foundation. This has been one of my favorite foundations since I started my channel, which was in 2017. I do have this in the shade 202 Creamy Natural, which is probably my favorite foundation shade. I currently do not have this shade in my collection, but I do have a deeper shade, which I'm hoping to get some good use out of over the summer because like I said, this is still a favorite product for me. And this one retails for $11.97. It's kind of hard to find these days though, so I don't know what the situation is. Coffee break. The other foundation I finished this year was from Wet n Wild, and this is their Tinted Hydrator. I had this in the shade Light Medium, so this was more of a summertime shade for me, so I was able to use it up in the summer. This only retails for $6.49, and honestly, as far as affordable products go, this is probably one of the best I've found. I am not running out to buy it right now because I really am not great at panning foundations, and I want to be actively working on what I have, so if I didn't have the crazy collection I have, I probably would try this out in a winter shade because this formula would probably be very nice for my dry skin right now. So for my foundation empties, my total for the year came out to $18.46 compared to $32 in 2022 and $41.31 in 2021. Next category, concealers. I do have three that I finished this year. First, I have one from Milani. I bought this at Ulta because I heard, heard so much about it. But honestly, I wasn't a big fan. I had this in the shade Nude Ivory. This retails for $10.99 and I felt like this one was a little too thick for my preferences. I definitely would have liked something a little bit thinner. It was usable, 
but it wasn't something that I liked enough that I would ever repurchase. The next one here I bought from Ulta, and this is the Oma Beauty Concealer in the shade Fair Lady T2. This retails for $25, so it's a little bit pricier. I'm pretty sure I bought this at an Ulta 21 Diesel Beauty sale. This is, I think, the second or third tube of this I've gone through. I actually really like this formula. I feel like I found some pretty decent drugstore concealers last year though, so I'm not running out to replace this one. More coffee. The last concealer I finished last year is from Dose of Colors. The shade name fell off, but I think it was one of the fairest shades. This retails for $24. This is not one I purchased, nor is it one that I would have purchased. This did come in an Ipsy Glam bag a while ago. And again, similar to the Milani, it was just too heavy for what I prefer on my under eyes these days. So my three concealer empties came out to $59.99 compared to 2022, where I finished $149.76. And in 2021, 100 and five dollars so significantly less concealer finishing up than the last couple years the next category i have is powder and i do have three powders two actually they're all minis we'll start with the miniest of the minis these retail for about 350 each these are the cover fx powders both of these are in the shade translucent light this is an okay powder i've never purchased it i feel like i get free samples of it fairly frequently and I use it because I have it, but it's not something I'd ever buy. Similarly, I've never bought the Laura Mercier powder, but I somehow always have samples of it. This size here retails for $24. This is not a cheap product. And again, it's just, it's just a powder. It doesn't really wow me in any way. Like it's easy to use up a sample of it, but it's not something that I would put my hard earned money into. So for my three little free samples here, this was $31 worth of powder compared to 2022's $26.90 and 2021's $45.74. Okay, the next category I have is bronzers and I did finish one mini contouring stick. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Mink Contour Stick. You can kind of see the shade that it was. This was a free sample. I think I got this from Ulta. This size here retails for $5.47. I think I had this in my project pan at one point because I was hoping to finish some sort of bronzing product this year and I'm glad that it's done. It was very pigmented, so like a little went a long way, but the color just wasn't a color that I naturally reach for. So I'm glad to be done with this. So like I said, for the year 2023, my bronzer empties totaled $5.47 compared to 2022's $70.48 and 2021's $20. So I do have a powder bronzer that I really, really, really am close to finishing. So I'm hoping this is the year. Surprisingly, I only finished two setting sprays this year. These were both full size and these actually were both project panned. So that definitely helped use these up. The first one here is the e.l.f. Jen Atkin spray. This one retails for $10. And this is actually one of the best misters I've ever had. So it definitely makes me interested in trying future e.l.f. setting sprays just because I'm going to assume they use a very similar component. That to me was the best part of this entire situation here. This one from Ciate is the Dewy Spritz. This retails for $22. This is also something I got from Ipsy. I know that you can see there's probably a little bit left, but it's all like sediment. It's not like anything that can spray out. Like if I try to spray it, it's just like nothing. So I'm calling it done. This did the job, but it wasn't spectacular. And I don't even think Ciate makes this anymore. So for the year 2023, my setting spray empties came out to $32 compared to 2022's $78 and 2021's $50. All right, the next category is primers. And for some reason, every single year in my empties video, my primers are the biggest category. So I have, that is not a primer. <laughs> One, two, three. So it's four full size, four minis. So let's start with the full size. The first here is from L'Oreal and this is their Glotion. This retails for $15.99. I feel like this had a very viral year, the Glotion. I've had it for a few years and it was fine. I don't think it's really different than any glowy product. So I'm not sure why this is having its moment, but to me, it's like very just generic glowy primer. This is definitely one of the oldest products in my collection. The Smashbox So Chill Coconut Setting Water Primer. What is it called? Primer Water. This smells fantastic. This retailed for $34. I don't even know if they sell the primer water anymore but I felt like I always had it because I never thought to like spray my, I never spray my face before I do my makeup. So it just wasn't like a step I was remembering. So it took me a long time to go through this. From AOA, which is Shop Miss A's brand, I have their Wonder Skin Illuminating Primer. This retails for $1. And I feel like similar to the Glotion, like they seem like the same, like they're just like glowy. 
kind of peachy toned glowy primers so that's why I'm like I don't really get the hype of the glow shim because this to me seemed very very similar it's just it's not a product that I feel like I buy anymore because I'm looking more so for hydration than glow and then the last full-size primer here is the elf jelly pop dew primer I actually just saw this on Ulta's website so she's back I don't know for how for, for how long but this is a $10 primer I really like it I have another one in my collection I've never tried the other like tacky primers from elf but my guess is they're all very similar but I am not one to know I do have two Becca first light priming filters these retail for $14. Becca's been out of business and I was trying to finish all my Becca primers this year. However, I found a little tiny sneaky one in the back of my drawer. So I still have one left. These were never my favorite, the purple ones. So I'm glad to be done with them. This is a primer I really do enjoy, the Smashbox Primerizer. This size retails for like $21. Smashbox primers are not cheap. They don't make this specific one anymore. They now have the Primerizer Plus. I'm not fully sure what the difference is. I do have the Primerizer Plus because they sent it to me in PR. And it seems very similar, but I'm sure there's something different. But this is, again, something a little bit more hydrating, which is what I prefer these days. The last primer here I have is the MAC Strobe Cream. This size retails for about $4.24. And I just, I don't get the MAC Strobe Cream hype. Very similar to the other glowy primers. It just makes you look like a little tin manny and then you cover it up. So I don't really get the hype. Always my biggest category. I guess I'm just a primer girl. For the year 2023, my primer empties came out to $114.23 compared to 2022's $110.24 and 2021's $117.63. So honestly, all those primer empties are like literally within like dollars of each other every year. So this is like a very traditional primer year for me. The next category is highlighters and there are zero highlighters here. I did not finish any. I did have one in my project pan and that one is still not done. So this year I had zero dollars in highlighter empties compared to 2022's five dollars and 2021's zero dollars. So highlighting empties is not my strong suit. Then the last face category is blush. I did finish one full size blush. This is the ColourPop blush stick in Hooked. This was also in my project pan, which helped me finish this one up. This retails for $10. So my blush empties for the year is $10. Very exciting to finish a full size blush. Compared to last year, my blush empties came out to $34 and 2021, $0. One blush empty a year is probably my goal, similar to bronzers. It would be great for highlighters too, but that's reaching for the stars. So my face product totals for 2023 came out to $271.15 compared to 2022's $506.38 and 2021's $371.76. Now in eye categories, I have mascaras and eyeliners. So there's a lot of mascaras here. I had a problem where I had too many open at once and I'm being very conscious to not have that anymore. I have six full size, four empties. That's a lot. Let's start with the full size. First here I have from Thrive. This is the what is it called? Liquid Lash Extensions. This retails for $25. To this day, this is still my favorite mascara. It's just harder to buy because Thrive Cosmetics isn't sold at any retailers. So I had gotten this one through Ipsy. Next here I have from Rowan, their Cake Mascara. I feel like I had heard good reviews on this. This what, retails for $28. Again, something I got from Ipsy. This one was very flaky and smudgy and I was not a fan of this formula at all. Next year from Huda Beauty, I have their Legit Lashes Waterproof Top Coat. I did buy this from Sephora. This retails for $19. This really does turn something like this into a more waterproof mascara, which is honestly how I use these in conjunction. It's just an extra $19 on top of a mascara price just seems silly to me, but it definitely helps with like the mascaras I have sitting in my collection. Next year from Maybelline, this is their Sky High Mascara. This is at this point in time, my favorite drugstore mascara, like if I'm buying a mascara because I need one, I'm getting the Sky High. This is like my third or fourth tube of this one. This is actually the brown shade. It's the first time I've gotten the brown. I did like it. Uh, this retails for $9.99 and it's certainly, actually I have one in my backup drawers already. <laughs> Next here from Lily Lashes, I have the Triple X Mascara. This retails for $24. Again, a mascara I got from Ipsy. Similar to the Rowan, it just, it was a little too smudgy and flaky and not something I prefer. Here I have the Wander Beauty Mile High Club Mascara. <laughs> Again, something else I've gotten from Ipsy. This retails for $26. So it's honestly the most, one of the most expensive in this uh, situation. I've gone through a couple of these over the year and I like it. If I got this again, I would use it. It's just not one where I think I want to like 
where I would ever want to go out and spend $26 on a mascara, but I do like the formula. Here I had a Benefit Roller Lash little sample. This size retails for $15 and I really like Benefit Roller Lash. I actually have the e.l.f. Lash and Roll on my eyes right now because I like Roller Lash so much. I still think I like Roller Lash more than the e.l.f. version, but the e.l.f. does kind of help with the price difference between the two. I do have two of these little samples from MAC. I hate these MAC samples. One is the Extreme Dimension Black Lash. One is the False Lash Extreme. I usually say these are about a dollar each. I have never to this day found a MAC mascara I like, so these are both no's for me. The last one here I have is the highly rated anti-gravity mascara from Milani. This retails for $6. This was a free sample I got from Ulta. I was so excited to try this because I'd heard so many people raving about it and this flaked on me constantly. This was not a favorite at all. Whew, a lot of mascaras. All right, my mascara empties for the year came out to $118, which is significantly higher than the past few years. 2022, I finished $66.98, and in 2021, I finished $72.49. I expect this category to be significantly lower next year because I do not plan to have multiple open at once ever again. The other category in the eyes category is eyeliners and I finished zero eyeliners this year which is just so disappointing but I will say like the first six seven months of the year I was having a lot of irritation in my eyes and they just watered constantly so I couldn't wear eyeliner so I'm going to attribute that to the situation. So for the year 2023 my eyeliner empties came out to zero dollars compared to 2022's $33.99 and 2021's $99.49. So for the year 2023, my eye makeup empties came out to $154.99 compared to 2022's $100.97 and 2021's $171.98. The next category I have are brows and I do have it broken into pencils versus gel. So I do have five brow pencils here, four full size, one mini. The only mini I have is from Benefit and this is their Precisely My Brow in the shade 3.5. This retails for about $11.25. I really do like the Precisely My Brow, but I feel like 3.5 just isn't a favorite shade anymore. And the price for these Benefit brow products are a little bit out of my price range at this point. I do have two NYX micro brow pencils in the shade Espresso. This is also the brow pencil I am wearing today. These retail for $10.99 each and you typically can get NYX on sale and that's when I like to pick them up because this is currently my go-to brow pencil of the moment. This, the baby hair brow pencil from Oma Beauty retails for $22. I have purchased this in the past and I really do think it's a good brow pencil. This one I actually got in an Ipsy bag. It's a good brow pencil, but $22 when I can get the NYX on sale just makes it not worth it. This other one I have here is from AOA Studios. Again, Shop Miss A. This is their sculpting brow pencil. I had this in the shade medium brown. This retails for a dollar. I didn't like this. The formula was too waxy. I prefer more of a micro brow pencil. And this was like a thicker, chunkier pencil. So I was able to focus on it and get it done, but it's not something I preferred. So those are my brow pencil empties, which came out to $56.24 this year compared to 2022's $39.97 and 2021's $138.98. So about five brow pencils a year. I don't know if that's a good or bad statistic. I did finish one brow gel and it's the clear brow gel from Anastasia Beverly Hills. This retails for $22. I used to love this brow gel, but lately it's just been like really bad. I don't know if I got a bad one or the formula has changed, but I did not enjoy using this. Currently, I really like the, the newer one from Maybelline that I can literally only find on Amazon for some reason. It has good hold and I like the color of it. So I will not be buying this again. So like I said, 2023's Brow gel empties came out to $22 compared to 2022's $24 and 2021's $19. So for the year 2023, my brow empties here came out to $78.24 compared to 2022's $63.97 and 2021's $157.98. The last category we're going through is lips. You guys, the only lip products I finished were lip balms. So we're gonna have an interesting experience right now. So the first category on my list is lip glosses. Zero, we did not finish any lip glosses this year. Compared to 2022's $17 and 2021's $7.92. Not shocking to me because I did try to finish one this year and it just, it doesn't, it didn't work. <laughs> All right, the next category on my list is lip balms. So we'll go through the lip balms we have here. 
This first one is from Aven, and this is their Sequel Fate Restorative Lip Balm. I did receive this one in PR. This retails for $18, and I did think this was nice. I would use this one before bed, but it wasn't one that like stuck out to me that I feel like I'd repurchase. This here is the Laneige Sleeping Mask. I've already repurchased this. This is the mini, which retails for about $3.19. This one actually my sister-in-law bought me when she was in Korea last year but I've already repurchased it from Yes Style. This one is the Belle en Jart gloss in for Wednesday's pink. It was like this really, really baby pink that I would only put on before doing my makeup just to like hydrate my lips a little and then immediately wipe it off. This retails for $18, got it from Ipsy, don't recommend. This one I bought in a Buxom set a few years ago. This is the Buxom Powerful Plump Lip Balm in the shade Big O. Honestly, I don't understand the point of a lip balm that plumps. I just want to have moisture. So I did not like this. This retailed for $19. And then this was a birthday gift from Sephora one year, the NARS lip balm in Laguna. This retails for $7. Similar to the pink one, I did not like the shade of this on my lips. So I would just use it before my makeup and wipe it off. So those were the five lip balms. And I did not break it out. It is three full size and two minis. So for the year 2023, my lip balm empties came out to $65.19 compared to 2022's $70.48 and 2021's $42.99. Oh my gosh, we're overheating. Let me get through these next two categories and then I'll take a break. I did not finish any lip pencils this year compared to 2022's $2.99 and 2021's $0. So that's obviously similar to highlighters, not a strong suit for me. And liquid lipsticks also, nothing was finished. So compared to 2022's $2.72 and 2021's $0. Again, not my strong suit. I'm going to take a break because we're overheating and then we'll finish up. <laughs> and we're back. We are not on fire anymore. Let me just pull up the handy dandy spreadsheet here. Speaking lip products. So for the year 2023, my lip product empties came out to $65.19 compared to 2022's $93.19 and 2021's $50.91. Obviously, lip products should be a focus area for me this year since I, besides lip balms, did poor work. Here's what I'll say. Obviously, like, it was a hard year for me. Even knowing how hard this year was, I still did finish 41 products here. Like, that is, that is an accomplishment. I need to remind myself. For me, the biggest accomplishment was the blush stick. Like, finishing a full-size blush is a big deal for me. If I had to pick one product that I, if I could only replace one item in this entire situation we have here, I'm gonna go with mm, the Thrive Liquid Lash Extensions. I mean, it's been years and I still haven't found a mascara I like this much. I just have so many mascaras in my backups that I cannot justify buying an expensive mascara when I have so much. Let me know, how did your 2023 pan out? Were you guys successful? Did you guys have a good year, a bad year, an in-between year? And yeah, the next video I'm gonna finish, I'm gonna film is my makeup inventory. So we'll see where my makeup inventory ended slash we're beginning 2024 with compared to a year ago. So stay tuned for that. Let me know how you felt about the overhead thing and if it's working out for you. Is there another style of video you would like to see this way? It wasn't the worst to set up now that I kind of have an idea of how it can work. And yeah, that's it for this video. As usual, thanks for stopping by my channel. If you're new here, click the subscribe button and ring that bell for notifications. I have my Instagram down below. Give it a follow and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.